We're Malin and Johan, a Swedish couple that have been sailing full-time since 2016. After three and a half years of sailing, we welcomed our daughter Vera on board. Most recently, we bought a farm in Sweden, where we are going to build our dream boat ourselves from scratch. Welcome aboard and please subscribe for weekly episodes. It will look something like this. The latest job was to build a strong back, which the temporary hull frames will be placed on. In two days, we're driving down to Germany in Düsseldorf to visit the boat show there, which is going to be really fun. 5 a.m. and we're off for Germany. We're driving down to Düsseldorf and first we're going through Malmö to pick up Grandma who is coming along and helping out with Vera. We're driving south of Copenhagen where we'll take the ferry across the Sound to Germany. It will save us some time. We have one hour left. The ferry only takes 45 minutes. The drive down to Düsseldorf took around 10 hours and we arrived to our Airbnb in the evening. evening. The boat show is held at the trade fair Messe Düsseldorf, which is located next to the Rhine River. Close to 237,000 visitors came to both Düsseldorf this year, from over 100 countries. The show area is 220,000 square meters big. It's like we're in an airport, it's so big. <laughs> and it's the largest indoor boat show in the world. In the 16 halls you can find everything from diving, surf sports, small boats, day sailors, multi hulls, yachts and super yachts. The bigger sailboats are located in Hall 16. There were a couple of brands that we missed here this year, like Garcia Yachts for example. But they did have their sister brand Allures on site. This was also the only aluminium sailboat at the boat show this year. We focused on sailboats of around the same size as Round 3 to get ideas and inspiration for the boat build. This is a nice compromise, having a solid rail up here and wire further down. Doesn't look that uh, bulky with just the pipe up here and the fake teak decks has really come a long way. I think this looks beautiful. 
from a meter's distance it really looks like real teak. I thought it was real teak. Yeah. And what's so good about it is that you can clean it with a high pressure washer and it's in one piece so it won't leak. It's uh, massive. That's really deep. It's like a <laughs> giant hole. Now you can fit a lot of stuff in there like all the fenders, lines probably and it's watertight. That's, That's where the chain nice. sits. Are we gonna have the same? Yeah, something similar. We haven't decided if we're going to have a hatch, but that's actually not a bad um, idea because nice. if you get water in there, it can spill over into this compartment. So this compartment is uh, will have a watertight bulkhead here. So much headroom. It's yeah. so big. That is a big boat, huh? It's a nice little sofa. Yeah, you can hang out here. Storage behind. I love it. It's very wide. Mm. I think it's like 4.6 meters, something like that. And we will have four. 4.25. At the widest point, but this boat seems to have the full width over a very long um, distance of the or part of the boat. Engine room. Mm. It's perfect to have the uh, fridge and freezer in this position instead of like this on that side because it won't fall over. It won't fall out when you heat it over. This really adds a lot having a mirror like this. It feels more spacious. Guest cabin. Two bunk beds. The next boat visit was at Swedish Halbarassi and their brand new model HR50. How wide is this? <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> very wide. Nice boat. Huh? I just want to say hello. I come from Ireland. Hi. I, I can't make the uh, the meal tomorrow, oh, okay. so we're going to uh, Feymar to do some work on our boat. Yeah. So enjoy the videos and thank you very much. Thank You're you. You're doing a great job with the with the boat. Thanks it's very for interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's great. They would block the wind from both sides. Hmm. It's a good question. Or maybe it will increase the ventilation. I don't know. This should be the mast we have on Grand Prix. Spacious, huh? Spacious, very nice. Huge sofa. Is that the length that we're gonna have? Let's try it out. Yeah, actually, I think ours is going to be a longer, bit longer than this one. <laughs> Very spacious guest cabin on the starboard side of the boat here. Plenty of headroom. And then we have the V berth up in the front. Also, also quite spacious. And something you see in the newer Halbarasis is that they have started to use uh, oak for the interior. Is this a feature you want to add in the design? I mean, it, it is quite comfortable sitting in these, but of course it takes up a lot of room as well. Mm. But 
so maybe not very practical, but I, I like it. I think it depends on what needs you have, how yeah. many people you are. I think you can get a sofa here as well. Yeah. Well, this is a much better solution than to buy a finished piece of uh, stove with induction. Just making a stainless steel box and then you just buy normal appliances, uh, not the marine stuff. It'll save you, It'll save us a lot of money. This is a feature I really like on the Albarasis, the steering mechanism, all mechanical. No wires. This is a beautiful boat. Day sailor, but but maybe not something you will take over the Atlantic or go long distance cruising in. Now we're gonna have a tour of the Amel 50, their newest model I think it is. Standard that all of them come with solar panels here, like flexible. I really like the main sheet system on this boat. With one line at the end of the boom going through and down to the gooseneck, and then into the cockpit where there's an electrical winch. Pretty cool that Amel produces their own masts, or at least they used to. Can you see yourself? Yeah, there? I can yeah. see myself yes. here. <laughs> Our friend Kai, he just bought an Amel 50, and he has promised us a tour of his boat. So I guess we're going to have to visit him now and have a look at his boat. Maybe we can go sail on it. That would be so. Really wonderful boat. Bow thruster. Sail, mainsail in and out. What a cockpit. Yeah, great cockpit. And since you can close this part as well, it goes all the way back here. We still have hatches here, so when it's hot, you can get ventilation. Let's go down below. And yeah, I have that hatch as well. Oh, here, this yeah. is a smart solution. It is. And it's still a nice like hangout area and it's connected to the setting. So a guest cabin. It's very bright, everything. Okay. But this is the V birth. This is also a guest cabin, or? Or is this the uh, master, no, uh, no master is in, in, in the stern. In the stern. Pretty nice feature with the portholes. You can see out when you're lying in bed. It's very different from the old uh, Amel models, like the Super Mario Mew and all these models. Yeah. It's, it's different. Quite a facelift, huh? <laughs> yeah, really. This seems to be the thing all the new boats have nowadays this type of lockers and you open them down there okay lots of storage i love the corian on top here this is actually a marine induction stove not uh you know 
but they made just a box. This is the real thing. And my guess is that this cost around 5,000 euros at least, so pretty expensive. Wow, lots of space. I love this fridge, Vitri Frigo. I don't know where this brand comes from, which country. This is huge, so much space. Oh, now we got in a hurry, we couldn't, we <laughs> didn't film the uh, master cabin that much because we need to go to this Vakies. No one knows Vakie. how to, Vakie. Vakie. no one has to knows how to pronounce this boat name. It's in the next boat here where you had to make like a private uh, booking. So we have time now in two minutes. So now we know where, how to pronounce the name of this boat, Vauquier 48, and it's built in uh, northern France, close to the Belgian border. This might be a solution for the, the lines leading aft from the mast for our boat, making something like this just in front of the wheels in the cockpit and have the primaries, or not the primaries, but the winches for the controlling the mast around here. And then the primaries on the side, but I don't think that will be very good on our boat. And then the lines going in the combing. Yeah. Inside here. But this is uh, pretty neat. Quite nice solution to just have yeah. when you're close to the aft of the yeah. boat, just to have backrests mm -hmm. like this. Yeah, it's still the floor. They hang on there. It should be there. It should be in the pulpit. Yeah. They hang on the back with me. Yeah. Yeah. It smells really leather. It does. It does. It feels cozy and like it's a uh, real wood, like yeah. It feels more nice materials. Yeah. It's a little bit of a, a Dexalon because it is raised yeah, I mean, up you and you can, can see you out. You can see out. Technical room. Cool. Ah, it is. I like it. Yeah. Small leather bands. Mm -hmm. This boat is uh, very well planned. Master cabin. I mean, I have full standing headroom back here as well. It's very airy and bright in here, with this huge window. And then if you, need, if you want some more privacy, you just pull down the curtains. Yeah. So three hatches, that's nice for ventilation. A lot of headroom, <laughs> it's <laughs> huge. <laughs> it's very, a lot of headroom, yeah. How do I get out? You don't. <laughs> Three cabins and they're spacious, all of them. Hmm. I love this idea. And this head was quite spacious as well. Separate shower style. One eighty-eight, eighty-eight feet. I think it would be so cool if we could make a model of Wrong Three as well, just to have it like this and to be able to envision the boat when it's finished. It's around a contest fifty uh, CS. It's a very big boat, it's super wide, enormous deck space. <laughs> wow! <laughs> That's uh, massive. Mm -hmm.
är snyggt med tyckna det är matt. Mm. Nice spot. It's very like high end luxurious but in a Dutch way I would say. Also in like Swedish way. The woodwork is beautiful. It's a teak with like a matte satin finish. It's not glossy at all. I love this. Oh, that's a big head. <laughs> oh, wow. This stone? No. It just looks like it? Yeah, it looks like it. Very nice. Contest has made a great job with their new model. The interior was stunning. So apparently this is the future of monohulls. <laughs> this type of it's supposed to be really efficient. And that's the bow. Here. Yeah, the bow, yeah. What do you think? <laughs> it looks crazy. Yeah, it does. Seems like a flat bow like that must be pounding a lot. But I guess you don't care when you're racing. So we're at the motorboat section of the show. Different world for sure. <laughs> We're in the equipment hall now, all the accessories for boats and there is a lot of decisions to be made when you're building your own boat. Lots of stuff to have a look at here. There will be around 50 <laughs> on one of these. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you can put it under the. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> put on the light and you have a small disco. You can see the Yeah. Oh, and you can couple it to a. Uh, that's what we're looking for, actually. Uh -huh. But we have that couple of them. We looked at quite many hybrid and electric engines and we're happy to see that several companies are now offering these. However, as many of them said, the prices have to come down because not many people can pay $60,000 for a hybrid engine. This is a, is it a hybrid? No, fully electric, fully electric. torpedo. But we want to have with the straight shaft and not the S drive. It's pretty cool, like a hybrid system, diesel and electric. How is it different from the, the ones you see that are more common with the, um, the brushes? Yeah, you the mean? brushes. Yeah. Um, this is an active system, I suppose? No, no, no. Huh? It's as passive as, as the brushes. Okay. Um, but this one, this one has a must have a direct connection to the water. Uh huh. It's trying to dissipate the charges that are in the atmosphere, or that tries to kind of equalize the, the potential difference mm -hmm. that you have between. So the it leads and the off air. the charge slowly. Yes. Rather than doing it fast. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And the thing with also like the force power of the brushes yeah. is they. Do, the way they function is they, they kind of just delay the lightning strike mm -hmm. by having a higher capacity. Mm -hmm. So they take up the charges, but when they're filled up with all the charges, the lightning strike can still occur. Okay. For them, there's no way to dissipate those charges. Ah, okay, okay. So 
and this one takes the charges away and then there's a there's a circle around the boat of around 100 meters where it's where it's protected okay so and it prevents the leader from forming yeah you first have to have a leader that goes up from the ground to the clouds yeah. and along that leader the actual lightning strike comes down do you need to have an actual cable straight into the water or are you just to no like an anode would be fine Anode, okay yeah, something like yeah. that the surface area for that doesn't need to be big it just needs to be a connection to the water with less than 10 ohms of resistance okay. yeah is that the price yes that's the price <laughs> i mean it's obviously a bit more than the other type that that's yes, in the market it is. It is. what's the reason that it's more expensive um i guess it's just the development costs yeah they were a lot higher to get this yeah. working um and this one really does prevent lightning strikes yeah. uh, when they were building the panama canal yeah. they were expanding it they always had to stop the people in the cranes they always had to stop working oh, yeah. uh, every time a lightning lightning clouds or yeah. like bad weather was approaching which happens quite often there. Yeah, yeah. and they put these on top of the, all the cranes and yeah. they could just keep on working, working yeah. and that no lightning strikes whatsoever yeah. Yeah, I mean, of course, obviously, it depends on what type of vessel you put it on, if it's expensive or not. Yeah, and it's, um, of course, it weighs two and a half kilograms, so yeah. on a on a 40-foot vessel, yeah, um, two and a half kilograms plus everything else does make a difference yeah. on top of the mast. Yeah. Um, so I think the smallest ones we've had was about 45, 50 feet, yeah. so, um, but it is, it is quite expensive. Still. On the other hand, though, um, if it can save you from a lightning strike, it's, yeah, um, which causes a lot of trouble. <laughs> we does. just had a customer here. He had a he had a boat that had huge delaminations yeah. uh, from a lightning strike. Then uh, the insurances. We we actually came up with this product. We we, we, we saw this product and took it up uh, into our distribution because the insurances. Yeah, maybe came you up can get us. your premium down if you have a system. That's the thing. Yeah. Um, when you when you have a lightning strike, usually the excess you have to pay yeah. is. A lot higher than for the standard damages, yeah. um, unless you have a lightning protection system. Um, and if you're somewhere in the Caribbean or somewhere else, and you get a lightning strike, I know. Um, replacing the electronics is first of all it's expensive, yeah, and it, it can take time, a long yeah. time because right now you yeah. can't get any. No, and a lot of times the faults on the electronics takes time before they occur. You that think too. you're okay, and then. A year later, stuff fault stops to work over time, and then you, it's hard to get that on the insurance because yeah, they're gonna say, well, you you signed off that yeah. everything's fine, and then yeah. exactly. In hall 14, you find a 90 meters long creek with real trees and rocks alongside it, where you can try out paddling a canoe or a kayak. Hi, crocodile! We're sure we're being chased by crocodile! This is so much fun. I think Farewell wants to spend the whole day here. Time flew, and after three days at the boat show, it was time to drive back home. <laughs> what a week! We've collected a lot of inspiration and ideas. And it was so fun to meet so many of you guys.